Hi guys, we're here at SGTV again. From some of the videos we've done, one of the talking points is tool theft and you know the issues in claiming back money um, and expenses and so on. So today we're joined by Sarah from Simply Business. Um, so Sarah, can you tell us a bit about what it is you do? Hi, I work in the marketing department at Simply Business. We've uh, about to kick off a PR campaign about tool theft. We know it's a massive issue for our customers. It's yeah. our most expensive, most claimed for reasoning is tool theft and there's not much we can do about it to speed up the, the claim payment. So we're trying to champion tradespeople by starting a petition to try and get 100,000 signatures, okay. uh, bringing in stricter regulations around selling secondhand tools and stronger punishment on those who get caught stealing yeah. tools. Because one thing in particular we hear a lot from of the guys is if they've experienced any kind of tool theft, the tool cover they have is not paying anywhere near enough or on time and it almost seems like a waste of money to guys. So, I mean, how is the, how do you sort of think that the petition's gonna jumpstart and make some kind of reform with that? We just hope it kind of makes people stop and think before they steal the tools. And I think with the stricter regulations around selling secondhand tools, we'll hopefully make it more impossible to get rid of them. Yeah. And we just hope that it, it can kind of bring people together Absolutely, to yeah. try and stop this epidemic really. Where can the guys out there find uh, the petition? Um, so it's on simplybusiness.co.uk um, slash stamp out tool theft or if you just look up hashtag stamp out tool theft it'll be on your socials. Guys if, you, if you're looking out there and uh, you know you're having these issues please do look this up it might be you know the, the start we need to make some sort of change out there. I'd just like to thank you Sarah for thank coming you. on the show and thank you guys for watching we'll see you again next time. Hello and welcome back to SGTV. And we are joined by David Savory from DSES. We're going to be talking about van and tool theft, things like that that are going to affect uh, the guys working for themselves. David, is this something that you've ever experienced um, having worked for yourself? You've got your own van. Not personally, fortunately, to yeah. date. <laughs> but I, I do know people who have been affected by it. Uh, and it's uh, obviously it's it, it's something that's immediately damaging to your business, and so it's, and it's a big problem. The van manufacturers seem to do very little regarding yeah. security features. I think they just assume that you're going to stick on whatever aftermarket features that you, you perhaps really need, which is a, a cop out, really, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, I know um, I know two or three examples of, of where this has happened, including one where um, uh, a chap I know. He had his van broken into, they cloned his key, I believe, because they didn't actually damage the van getting into there, but they managed to clone his key and, and, and pop it open. Uh, and they had away his tools and his tester, his, his toolbox and his tester. And he said to me, um, he said, uh, he was about my sort of age, he said, some of those tools I've had since I was an apprentice. And he said, when I realised that I've, I've, you know, I'd had them for years, they, they weren't worth anything to anybody, they were beaten up, but they, they were, they'd been my tools throughout my whole working life. And when I realised I'd lost them for good, I actually cried a little bit. And this was a big bloke, you know, yeah, you wouldn't yeah. expect it from me. You know, I, Bloody hell. It's understandable that you're going to get some kind of sentimental attachment. Uh, to it, uh, isn't absolutely, it? yeah. And the thing is, he found his fluke listed online on eBay. He was able to identify. They'd, they'd rubbed off his initials, but he was able to identify the markings, the various scratches and bumps and, and markings that had, had gone on it through the years. And it was from a, a seller based in London. And he went to the police and said, "This is my kit. I can identify these markings. This, that's my kit there." And they wouldn't do anything about it. They said, "Even if you raid the address, the equipment's probably." there so and that's the trouble isn't it you, you do kind of feel that you're at the mercy of these people who are out to damage your livelihood just for their own petty gain because they're not going to get much for this sort of stuff you, you can lose thousands of pounds with a kit but they're not going to get that kind of no. money back for it it's all used uh, it's all fairly beaten up it's all going to get sold at car boot sales or on ebay or whatever They've woke up one morning and all the tools are gone. Potentially that's a day, two, three days. Absolutely. Work Immediately gone. a day's work is ruined. Yeah. And it's it's your loss of face with your customer because you've got a phone and will say, look, the van's been broken into. And you know what? Uh, a, a lot of a lot of clients are very wary of tradespeople saying, can't turn up today because I've got a the van's broken down or I've got a flat tire yeah. or it's, it's one of those things they think, oh right, has, has that really happened or have you just got an overruling job but yeah. lost control of <laughs> it's not like you're working for a big company where you can call in and say, Oh, I've had a flat tire, I can't come in today. Well you're probably you're probably still gonna get paid, but for the self employed guys out there running their own businesses, Absolutely. that's it the you know, yeah. they're stuck. And it's not necessarily like you can replace everything immediately. I mean, it, it takes a long time to build up the level of 
uh, tools that you've got, including silly little things that you don't use on a daily basis, but when you need it, you need it, you think, oh, I've got one of them on the van. If you, if you sort of lose that box, then you're forever trying to replace it then, or replenish it, so to speak. You, you, obviously, there's the, the things like the cutters, the pliers, the BD screwdrivers, they're, they're a no-brainer, then they go. But they'll be, you'll be out on a job one day and think, oh, I need that little finaka plank to make a hole that in that technical thing. Term. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, I haven't got one anymore, have I? Because someone's nicked it. My builder I was working with just two days ago, he was working in a cherry picker. The van was parked on, on, the, on this driveway, this private driveway. And while he was up in this cherry picker, apparently someone just sort of got onto the premises, helped themselves to the contents of his van and, and left. And he, he, he was up there, he didn't even spot him doing it. He just came down and was like, oh, where's my stuff gone? And we were there on site the other day doing a job and he, and he needed a, an extension to his, to his drill. And he said, oh yeah, I've got one here. Oh no, I haven't got it anymore, have I? And that's the kind of thing, you know, that, so all of a sudden you're caught out on site because you haven't got that little do wicker that you used to have that you don't have anymore. Some guys have uh, like tool cover and tool insurance, but even then I've heard they're not brilliant. You might yeah. not necessarily get the payout. He was that's saying going to about cover that. It yeah, he's saying something about um, it's whether it's as new or like for like. Obviously, if you've got a drill that's three years old and pretty battered up, to say if you go to the insurance company and say, well, that's been nicked, they're not necessarily going to give you the value of a brand new drill out of it. They might say, well, look, that drill was three years old. It's probably end of life anyway. We'll give you this token amount for it. So yeah. you, it's not necessarily covering the full loss of, of, of the item that's, that's gone because you, you've still got to pay, pay full price to get a new one, even though the old one might have only lasted another six months or so. You don't know, do you? Mm. Last another three years or something. You, you, you just don't know where you are with it. So you, you're not necessarily getting a, um, a straight like for like value or replacement. You might be getting something that they deem to be worth the equivalent of, of what, yeah. what remaining life was it's not, left. It's not really fair, point. is it, to be honest, when you know, you might have spent a lot of money that you're having to earn for yourself yeah. to buy something, and then if it gets nicked, you're not even going to get that back. Yeah, this is it. And obviously with insurance cover, you're, you're paying for that cover. It's an extra overhead that you're having to, to cover. So um, when you find you need it, if you find that you can't really count upon it, you, you have to question whether it was worth worth the extra effort. Well, we're going to uh, just quickly mention um, one of the products. Um, we have uh, ESP, Elite Security Products. We've got a full video on this, so if you'd like to see that, just click the link in the description. So this just, uh, you mount it into the back of your van, um, but it's basically um, a van cam and you can record anyone that's going in and it can also link up with your SD card to plug it in if you need to hand it over to police or anything like that. So as I said, if you want to see more about that, there is a link in the description. So thank you for joining us, David, and um, we hope to see you again soon. If you'd like to see more, please do like and subscribe. See you again.